what does it mean to be native to a place or to adopt it and have it be part of the cycles of your life, part of the, the landscape of your personal history? Until the age of nine, I lived near High Park with my parents and grandparents. My grandfather, who was my major caregiver, guy who taught me how to read and how to play poker, walked me probably every good day into the park and pushed me on those swings until either he couldn't push anymore or I learned how to swing. The park has been the place for a lot of significant moments in my life. Family reunions, both public and secret. And one day when I was looking to downsize from an unhappy house in North York, I heard that a respected developer was building near High Park and I immediately got my name on the list and I waited and I waited until it was built. And now my windows overlook my 400 acre front yard. So here's a condensed creation and conservation story. Big Bang, Earth Cools, Glaciers Rule. First peoples arrive. They do controlled burns to preserve the tall woods that attract the delicious herbivores and useful plants. Around 1700, several First Nations agree to a dish with one spoon covenant. Users will conserve the land and share its bounty equally. Lots of people with guns, germs, and steel come from the other direction. John George Howard, busy, busy architect, buys 160 acres to start a relaxing sheep farm away from downtown Toronto. Later, he donates his Regency cottage and farm on several conditions. He and his wife live there till they die. No harvesting of trees, no sale of alcohol. It must be kept free for public use in perpetuity. We pretty much live by these conditions, and we too, since the year 2000, do controlled burns to keep it healthy. I like to think of the park as the love child of the city and the wilderness, a compromise complete with flush toilets and signs for poison ivy. Every generation clothes it in slightly different social constructs, and we mirror each other. The formal gardens and cement fountains appealed to the rising bourgeoisie and wage slave alike. Large areas for team sports support the concept of meritocracy, the level playing fields of 20th century capitalism. There is a real love child in High Park's history. John Howard might have been a well-educated and successful British immigrant, but he considered it a misfortune that he had been born illegitimate. That didn't stop him leaving High Park as a very legit legacy. And ironically, he also left several illegitimate children of his own by a younger woman whom he supported and apparently loved. I was conceived out of wedlock as the saying went, but I never felt any misfortune from it. I was adopted by a good family and, and raised by caring people. I didn't want to hurt my adoptive family by going to look for biological relatives, but after I gave birth to a child of my own, I thought that heritage and background and maybe medical information would be important to me. Uh, so I started the search for my birth mother at least. When she was located several years later, um, she agreed to meet me and I proposed High Park. We walked from the Bluer Gates to a picnic table near the Chess House and I had brought with me an album of photos that um, I was going to show her about how I had looked as a child and growing up. She gave me my origin story and told me about relatives, all of which was very interesting. And I guess it all came full circle when I came across a picture that was taken of me as a baby on a picnic blanket in High Park with my adoptive parents. We agreed that day to become friends and we still are but I never told my adoptive parents about her and they died without knowing.
my animal experiences in the park have forged um, an incredible connection. At various quiet times, um, the early morning, mid-evening, I have seen um, a young beaver pulling a reed along in the water. The best was probably four mink running kind of nose to tail across uh, a path at the end of the park. Um, two big wild turkeys at dusk when they fly up into the trees to roost. In the spring I watched as a swan got its um, foot caught in spring ice. It was struggling to get free but it, it didn't make any sounds. Finally, luckily, it did get free. And people love to tell stories about what they've seen. One man told me about a young coyote he had seen uh, around the edge of uh, Grenadier Pond searching for birds eggs uh, in the nests there in the spring. The same man uh, told me about uh, seeing a group of people uh, circling, uh, circled around a tree and they were watching a raccoon mother as she was trying to teach three of her kits to come down out of the, uh, the tree nest. And she just kept uh, climbing down, very carefully down the tree, and then she'd do a U-turn and come back up, trying to encourage them to, to come down. Frequent visitors do have their favorites um, in the park, and mine is a tree, a Chinese Dawn Redwood. The tree was thought to be extinct, but it was found in a um, remote corner of northern China in 1948, and to keep the species alive, they sent seeds out to parks all around the world. So we've got uh, about three of them at least in the park that I've seen, and it is one weird tree. It is a red-skinned conifer with soft leaves that come off in the winter. So unlike all other fir trees, evergreen trees, it goes bare in the winter. The circle of life is everywhere in the park, but more so even for me. When I moved into this apartment with way too much stuff, um, I brought along with me two boxes the uh, remains of my parents. One day later in the fall after I'd moved in, my daughter and I decided it was time to deal with that. And we took the path across the street, the one we usually take for our, our walks in the park, nice big broad path down through the trees. And about halfway down the hill, we branched out into the underbrush and we found sort of a little clearing where there were two fallen tree limbs one on top of the other and we walked around them emptying the ashes as we went on the fallen leaves and and the bare earth i i love it that in the springtime there's a a big community of trilliums above them on the hill and when i look out my windows i see trees and plants that are nourished by the ashes of my parents. I realized I was looking for something when I moved to this area, when I moved near High Park. And I think I found it in the park, but I also created it. And there must be a million stories that arise from that park. I'm very glad to be near them. <laughs>